Howdy guys and girls, I hope you're all having a fantastic day. So, another Jakey Lee video. I am really, really enjoying doing these Jake videos because um, his solos are just absolutely fantastic. His rhythms are really intricate. Um, when I did the uh, cover of Bark at the Moon, it was quite a challenge to actually learn all of that stuff. And, you know, I've been playing for over 30 years and I've never actually learned it properly. <laughs> so this was an absolutely fantastic opportunity to do that, to really delve into it and to get all of those parts correct. But a big part of it was also getting the guitar tone and not just for this track, but also the Red Dragon Cartel track, Havana as well. So you guys saw Guitar Gladiators from last week, George Lynch and Jake E. Lee such a cool thing to do to put those two awesome guitar players together just to compare their styles if you haven't seen it already i'll leave a link somewhere up here and in the description box so you can go and check it out and watch guitar gladiators and vote for who you really really like as a guitar player there are no winners in guitar gladiators it's just a little bit of fun i love both these guitar players but i just want to know who do you prefer jake or george let me know so today we are gonna deep dive into the gear that I used to get the tones for not just Bark at the Moon, but also Havana as well. And um, I was kind of a, a little bit lazy when I dialed in the tone for Havana. I'll tell you now. <laughs> kind of lazy and also I was experimenting a little bit because I had just gotten my Yamaha THR2 practice amp. And I actually used that for all of the tones on Havana. For Bark at the Moon, I actually used my purple number 39 head. So I am going to show you around that and show you all the tones. I do have a little secret as well, a bit of secret sauce which went into the making of that tone in particular, which uh, you'll see as the video progresses. Also, a ton of you have one of these, a Friedman BEOD pedal. I'm revisiting this today. I haven't played it for a couple of years. <laughs> I have such an awesome collection of amplifiers now that I really need, see the need to actually plug this in. So it, it's actually been sitting on the shelf, but I kind of got curious whether I could get the Jake tone with this as well. So I'm going to show you this plugged into my Plexi, uh, which is in the other room. And um, I'm going to show you how I dialed in a Jakey Lee tone using one of these. Now, um, this is an awesome pedal. Some of you also have this one as well, which is the Dirty Shirley. Now this one's the more appropriate one to get the Jake tone because it's a little bit more kind of vintage vibe. This is more modern vibe, but both of them do the job really well. And if you want to get a really, really authentic Jake tone, this is the pedal to check out. This is the Sakalis Room number 40 pedal. I met Chris Sakalis a couple of years ago at NAMM. He has an awesome pedal company and uh, I got a mail shop about three weeks ago, four weeks ago, um, showing this pedal. And I immediately contacted him and said, I want one. <laughs> this is every Dream Marshall you can ever think of in a box. This is a Super Lead Plexi. This is a JCM 800. This is also the SIR number 34 and the SIR number 39, all in one box. Plus, there's a variac on it as well. Yeah, and it's really effective. So it's gonna be fun showing you how to get the tones with all of these awesome pedals. All right, let's dive into the gear that I used to actually record Bark at the Moon first, and um, then I'm gonna show you how to get the tones with all these different pedals. Let's go. The starting point for me for the Jake tone for this video was this. This is my uh, Jet City purple number 39 head. This is an amplifier which I initially bought just as a Jet City JCA 22 head and I converted into this amp. Now, why is it called purple number 39? Well, because uh, two of my favorite amplifiers are the Aspen Pittman Purple Marshall, uh, the Purple Plexi, uh, which uh, George Lynch used back in the day, and also Warren D. Martini, a bunch of others, and uh, number 39 because of SIR number 39, which also George used, Slash used it as well, apparently, and a bunch of other guys as well. It was a very, very, very popular amp. So this was my obvious choice. Now, um, the cool thing about this amplifier is two channels. I obviously have the Purple Plexi and the SIR number 39 in there, but on channel one, I actually have, you might be able to see this little uh, switch here. Now this switch is between Plexi 
and 800. So um, I switched it to 800. The 800 is actually the uh, SIR number 34 because Jake used an 800, right? A JCM 800. Right, these are my settings as well. So uh, this is the preamp, this is the gain for this channel and I had it maxed out. And then I'm gonna go over to the EQ section. So the bass is on about four, the middle is on seven. Want it to be pretty mid heavy because um, whenever I listen to Jake's tone, it, it does have a lot of mids in it. The treble is at six and um, then going over to the master, maxed out, it's at 10. There you go. <laughs> And then I had the presence at about 5.5. Uh, I didn't want it to be too, too um, presency. And I, I actually have a switchable presence in here and I had it on purple mode. Uh, I can't remember the value of that um, capacitor in there, but it basically warms up the, the presence a little bit. It gives it a little bit more kind of high end sparkle, high mid sparkle. Now, I also had my depth control rolled in because I wanted some of that low mid, low end coming in as well. And this control here, which says purple on the top, this is actually a negative feedback control. So uh, when I have it all the way down here, it's SIR number 39. When I have it all the way down here, it is Aspen Pittman Purple Plexi. And this is a warmer tone. There's a little bit less gain um, and a warmer tone. When I go this way, it's a brighter tone, uh, much more bark, much more kind of growl and stuff. So I like to keep it in the middle and I experimented with this for the Jake tone and this was the perfect place. So this was my starting point, my amplifier and they're the settings, they're the exact settings that I had. Now to tighten up the low end, I had my trusty Tube Screamer as well. Now I love this pedal, this is just an awesome, awesome pedal. Um, this is actually a reissue which I have um, fettled with and uh, turned it into basically 1981 spec and it sounds so, so, so incredibly good. Very, very dynamic pedal. These are my settings. I leave them on there pretty much all the time. I, I don't really mess with these settings. So uh, the gain is about 10 o'clock. The uh, level is about two o'clock and the tone is just a little bit under 12 o'clock. So that's it. I had that. All that was going into two notes captor was a bit lazy. I didn't bring my um, Boss Wazza um, Tube Amp Expander into here and use that. I love using that because it has a little bit more control over it. But you know, this sounds great as well. So this went directly into the interface and then into my DAW. And that cable you saw coming out of the captor comes into my Audion ID44, which is an awesome interface. Love the sound of this interface. And then it goes straight into Logic. Alrighty, I'm gonna switch over to Logic and show you the secret sauce which actually made this tone possible. If you're enjoying this video, please do consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that bell notification as well. It's sure appreciated and helps me to continue making awesome videos like this just for you guys. And it is sure appreciated. Please also do give it a thumbs up and a share on social media. The YouTube algorithm absolutely adores that and I really, really appreciate it. Alrighty, I'm in my studio now and in front of Logic here and I'm actually going to show you the secret sauce which actually made this tone possible and it's pretty cool. So um, I'm just going to play the track for you first uh, just so that we can have a listen. I love listening to this. It's just such an awesome riff. That is so cool. <laughs> you can never get bored of that riff. It is just so, so awesome. Such a fantastic piece of music. All right, so in Logic here, I have two rhythm tracks and I'm gonna solo them up so that you can have a listen just to the rhythm tracks here. <laughs> What I wanted to capture with the rhythm tracks was a lot of mid-range, a lot of punch, a lot of growl, which the amp was actually giving out. But the secret source to this was the cabinet. Now, um, my favorite speaker cabinet is one that I have. It's a 112 cab, which lives in the other room, and it has a 1978 
Roller Celestian G1280 speaker in there, which sounds absolutely fantastic. I love the sound of that speaker. And I'll actually play the amp through that speaker in a second for you. But what I did uh, for this was to actually capture impulse responses of that actual cab. Yeah, a 1978 Roller Celestian G1280. It's quite a rare speaker now. I was lucky enough to get two of them a couple of years ago and I have been using them ever since. They're well worn in, they're broken in, they're beautiful sounding, absolute stunning sounding. And I'm so, so happy that I have actually captured those impulse responses. Now I do have them available for sale now as well. So if you would like to check them out, then I will leave a link in the description box below and you can check out the impulse response packs of the actual speaker. All right, back to this. I have um, two different impulse responses which are going on. So on Rhythm Guitar 1 down here, um, I have one which is called Deep Cab 2. Now, um, you can see on the left hand side here that I have different mixes. And uh, these are ju just the quick mixes. So if I actually show you uh, the folder structure here, I actually have JP mixes. JP being me. <laughs> I also have JP57, which is obviously a Shaw SM57, a JP121, which is the Royer um, 121 mic, uh, the R121, the ribbon mic, uh, the JP421, which is an MD421 Sennheiser um, microphone, and I also have the JPS7 as well, which is the Shaw SM7 mic. Now, in each of these folders, there's actually 16 different impulse responses in each of them. So um, I have two packs available, just the mixes and also the mega pack, the one I call mega pack, which actually has 70 different impulse responses. So if you did want to deep dive into having an SM57 um, off axis and coupling it with a 121 right in the middle and mixing them in, which I did actually on the lead part, which I'll show you in a second, you can do that. But for the rhythm parts, I actually uh, did these combination um, impulse responses and uh, for the first rhythm part I used this one which is called Deep Cab 2. Now I'll be honest with you, I, I can't remember exactly which impulse responses I used for it but it sounds fantastic. So if I solo rhythm guitar number one and we have a listen to it, this is how it sounds. And it's quite gnarly, it's quite aggressive, it has a punch to it. That's exactly what I wanted to capture. And that's what the speaker sounds like. It does so in my room as well. Alrighty, rhythm guitar number two. I actually used deep cab number one. So the reason I use different cabs left and right is just to give a slight contrast in sound and it basically creates a wider stereo mix. So that's why I use deep cab one on the right hand side. And usually I would do it the other way around. For some reason I did it this way where Deep Cab 2 is on the left and Deep Cab 1 is on the right. Usually I have Deep Cab 1 on the left and Deep Cab 2 on the right. <laughs> Whatever works, right? <laughs> Alrighty, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play uh, this rhythm guitar number two and uh, you'll see how the sound differs here. So slightly different sound there. It has a little bit more presence, a little bit more bite in there as well. I'll flick between these two so that you can have a listen to um, what the differences are between them. So uh, I'll start with rhythm guitar number one and then we'll go to rhythm guitar number two. So as you probably heard there on rhythm guitar number two, there's a little bit more low end push as well. And it basically creates a nice contrast between the two so that you get that stereo separation. So if I play both of them now.
<laughs> Love that part. Alrighty, so that was the first part. Now going over to the lead guitars. Now when I did the lead guitars, I did switch channels on my purple number 39 head. I went to the second channel, which is actually the SIR number 39 channel. It's high again. I wanted that high again, but also it has a slightly different tone structure in there as well. It's got a little bit more presence, more bite, and I wanted that to be in the lead part so that it would stand out a little bit more from the rhythm parts. It's just about separation. Again, I used uh, the impulse responses from my um, G1280 cab. So uh, you'll get to hear that now. I'll solo up the, the lead parts and just play you a little bit first. A nice bit of delay there, courtesy of Sound Toys Echo Boy. Alrighty, so for this I used a classic combination of a 57 and a 121 mic. And both of these microphones sound slightly different and I basically had the levels mixed in um, slightly differently as well. So there's more 57 in there and a little bit less of the uh, 121. As you can see the level is actually much lower on the 121 than the 57. So the 57 sounds like this. And the 121 sounds like this. I'll boost the uh, volume so that you can hear it a little bit better. So the 121 has uh, a lot more of a throaty sound. It has more low end in there as well. And the combination of the two is what creates that whole vibe of that lead part. And I love that combination. Uh, there's a little bit of kick coming from that 121. Uh, but the the actual bite of the guitar is coming through with the 57. Uh, like I showed you before, these are in the impulse response pack, which I have. And I basically just used one of the 57 um, impulse responses and one of the 121 impulse responses. All right, over to effects very, very quickly. So um, I use very, very few effects in my uh, mixing chain. Um, I have this uh, Lindell 80 uh, channel basically running through everything which is basically an emulation of a Neve console. And all I do here is boost the uh, the gain here. Now this is just a saturation knob, so it just adds a little bit of harmonic distortion in there. There's no EQ going on uh, at all. So all the sound is actually just coming from the amp and the impulse response. All of the tone is basically shaped via those two. Now I do have one extra uh, layer of uh, tone shaping in the lead bus, which is this uh, plugin, which is the Plugin Alliance Mark EQ40. I love this plugin because it actually adds a really nice, beautiful high end. They actually have what's called an air band, which is a 40K um, band. And uh, I boost this quite a lot. I met the guys from uh, Marg a few years ago at NAMM, and they explained to me the reason this works so well is because the Q on this band is very 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 shallow so it goes up literally just like that usually on an eq band you you have it going up like this but this is very 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 shallow so it just adds in air also added in a tiny bit of high end just to create a little bit more separation from the rhythm tracks as well and for the effects i had sound toys echo boy this is set to the default echoplex love the sound of that and the reverb is Soft Tube's ZAR 1R. Love this reverb, really, really cool sounding. I always set it to the dark setting, 100% wet, uh, a little bit of pre-delay on there, and uh, the time is around 1.86 seconds, basically just a little bit above the whole setting. And that's it. That was everything. That's what actually created all of the guitar tones on this track. It's quite simple. But basically, that's how I like to work. I like the simplicity of it all. You know, I, I like to make sure that my amp 
and my impulse responses are doing all the heavy lifting. Um, if I need to use an EQ, then I will. But most of the time, I don't need to because I actually have everything set up so that it just works. And on this track, it just worked. So let's go back to the beginning of the solo and listen to the whole track. Why not? Let's listen to a little bit. Super, super cool. So that is how I got the tone on that actual track. Alrighty, I'm going to take purple number 39 into the other room and I'm going to actually play it through um, my speaker cab so that you can have a listen to it. And then I'm going to show you how to get the tones from these various pedals as well. I've actually dialed in the tones um, onto these pedals and I'll give you a close up of all of these pedals because I know a bunch of you will have one of these, the Friedman BEOD. But trust me, this pedal is just incredibly cool. You're going to love listening to this. Alrighty, over to the other back cave. All right, I've got my gear set up in the room now. I have my purple head plugged into that amazing speaker in that um, oversized 112. And I'm playing my iconic guitars, Evolution S guitar, which is just incredible. This is the guitar that I played on the video. It is uh, loaded up with Lola Imperial pickups, which are fantastic. Uh, has a Goto 510 bridge with uh, Wilkinson locking um, saddles there as well, and locking tuners on it as well. Such a cool guitar, it's a beautiful, beautiful guitar. Sounds great for this as well. <laughs> That sounded pretty cool, but I'm gonna try it with this. This is my custom 69 Plexi lead. Uh, this is called JP69. Uh, you can watch the uh, build video of this if you'd like. This actually has a mode on the back, uh, which is called the Miyagi mode. Wax on and wax off. And it essentially uh, ties together the cathodes of uh, valve one, which is kind of getting into JCM 800 territory. So it gets pretty hairy when it's in that mode. So I'm gonna try it with this as well. This amp sounds freaking amazing. <laughs> this app it is freaking amazing all right let's give the Friedman BOD a try so um, I have the bass at about 11 o'clock the treble about mm, 2 o'clock the presence about 2 o'clock volume is a little under 12 the gain um, I kept down on purpose because <laughs> this gets very hairy um, I've got it plugged into the um, plexi because it was already plugged in and it sounds great through here anyways um, so the gain is about mm, 9.30ish and uh, the tight control is way down because I want the bass to be a little bit loose as well. Alrighty, let's uh, give this a shot. <laughs> Thank you. 
Next up, the Friedman Dirty Shirley pedal. Now, I think this pedal is more appropriate to the 800 sound, um, basically because uh, the Dirty Shirley is actually based on an 800 with the um, power amp section from a JTM 45. Now, if you want to find out more about the Dirty Shirley, head over to Head First Amplifications YouTube channel. Um, Jason Tong has done a fantastic video explaining basically the Friedman Dirty Shirley because um, he builds a board for them and he's built a couple of them as well. And he also has a fantastic video showing which mods go into making the amp, the Jake Ely Signature Series Friedman amp. So if you're interested in stuff like that, do head over. Jason's a fantastic guy. I'm going to be building one of his amps later this year as well. So um, go and show some love and go and um, hit that subscribe button on his channel as well and find out all of the details about the Jakey Lee Friedman amp. So settings on this, the bass is at about two o'clock, the treble's two o'clock, the presence is about 2.30, yeah, almost three o'clock. The volume's down there, that's just uh, for unity um, levels. The mids are up now. This is the secret weapon of the uh, Dirty Shelly, the mids, because that's gonna give it more of a, a mid-range bark. And the gain is there at about two o'clock. Let's give this a try. Alrighty, final pedal. This is the Sakalis Audio Works Room 40 pedal. This is so insanely cool. I got it just a few days ago, literally, and I plugged it in and I was like, oh, wow, just absolutely amazing. Now, this is basically a Plexi in a box and it's an 800 in a box as well. And it is also the SIR number 34 and the SIR number 39 in a box, in a box, in a box, which looks beautiful, by the way. <laughs> Chris has done such an incredible job of this. Now, this basically um, looks like all the controls on my Plexi back there. So I have two volumes, uh, one for the uh, normal channel and the other one for the, uh, the more bassy channel. And then the master, now this is not just a regular kind of, you know, unity game thing. This actually acts like the master volume on an amp. So as you turn it up, the pedal actually reacts like an amp and you get that power amp stuff going on as well. Love this one. I've got it say Variac. Yeah. <laughs> you guys know what that is. It's the Van Halen thing, right? <laughs> Alrighty, we've got two modes on this as well with this little switch. One says 19, which is 1959 Super Lead. And the other one says 22, which is the 2203, 2204. Um, which is the precursor to the Jace EM800. And down here, full complement of um, tone controls. Yeah. Bass, middle, treble, and presence. Has a boost on it as well. I'm not gonna use the boost right now because everything will just start, start squealing because the 800 mode has plenty of gain, especially through my Plexi, which I'm gonna plug it into now. This sounds so awesome. Let's do it. So very quickly, the settings on this pedal. I have the master at maximum, the Variac at maximum because I want gain, more gain, more gain, yeah. <laughs> I have volume one at maximum as well. And I have volume two, which is the uh, the body, uh, the more bassy channel um, at about mm, two o'clock. Then I have the presence at one o'clock, the bass at three o'clock, the mids at about four o'clock and the treble about one o'clock as well. And I have the pedal engaged, I don't have the boost engaged. Let's have a listen to how this sounds. <laughs>
my god, I love that pedal. It is just insanely cool. Yeah. So there you go, two amps, three pedals. Which ones did you like? What were your favorites? I would love to know. So leave a comment below and let me know. I absolutely adore my Plexi. <laughs> this amp just sounds so, so damn good. I always love playing this. I usually play in input one. The pedals work best in input two because it's a little bit darker and they all have a lot of um, treble frequencies coming through. So um, it was overloading the, the treble on channel one. Um, I have tried them with the uh, purple number 39. They sound great through there as well. So um, love this amp. It's absolutely amazing. This amp is an absolute beast. It's an absolute monster of an amp. Show you a little bit more of it. Yeah. <laughs> this has so much gain. <laughs> it's crazy. I didn't need any pedals or anything. I wasn't using any boost pedals or my um, tube screamer, anything with either of these amps. The tone is just fantastic. Different tubes in both. Uh, this actually has um, 6P, 14P power tubes in there. They're um, Russian tubes, which are an EL84 replacement. Uh, Mullard in position one, and then I've got some, um, I think, uh, Mazda tubes in there, and they sound fantastic in the preamp. This is an absolute beast of an amp. It has um, six AC7 tubes in the power section. Uh, it's 50 watt, this is um, 20 watt and also has a mullard in position one and two GE tubes in positions two and three. Such a phenomenally defined sound I get from this amplifier. You know, the definition was just what really grabbed me about this amplifier. Pedals as well, they sounded cool. Uh, my favorite, if I was to pick a favorite, the Sakalis. Absolutely amazing. But how good does this sound? <laughs> I'm going to do a few more videos with this because there are so many juicy sounds coming out of this. It's just insanely good. So, like I said, I had it on the uh, 2203, 2204, or is that 2204, 2204? I, I don't know. Anyways, the 2022 mode. I had it in the 800 mode. <laughs> sounds so incredibly good. It is phenomenal absolutely fantastic pedal these two did a decent job as well if you have a B then this is how to dial it in like I showed you and the Dirty Shirley as well if you have one of those these two I found um, a little bit kind of they sounded like pedals uh, this sounded like an amplifier these sounded like pedals still sounded good this had a lot of gain both of them have um, plenty of gain this was a little bit more mid-rangey I think this one's more appropriate for the Jake tone but you can certainly get it with the BE pedal as well. Like I said, I haven't plugged it in for a couple of years, so it was actually kind of cool to play through them again. Um, interesting to play through them as well, but oh man. This, and this, <laughs> and this, and these two. I don't know. <laughs> I love these things. <laughs> Alrighty. You wanna find out how I got the tone for um, Havana as well, don't you? Let's go back to the studio and find out. Push on, you're living out of hand, the joke's on, the ones that never laugh at all, the words I'm saying, trashing all the ways I'm staying, leave your world behind, still decay. Alrighty, back in the studio and I'm going to show you how I got the tone for Havana. Did it with this? Yeah, this little beastie of an amp, this is awesome. This is, of course, the Yamaha THR2. I bought it a couple months ago just to uh, do my guitar lessons and stuff. So easy to use and stuff. I've uh, got a couple of um, patches programmed into it and it sounds fantastic in the room. And basically, I know I said at the beginning of the video, I was being lazy and just plugging this in. It wasn't really. Um, I wanted to see how this sounded recorded. Uh, now, when I did record it originally, I used a little bit of a kind of EQ trick, which I will show you in a second, to get the tone that I wanted. But since then, I have actually dialed in the same tone into this. So that's the first thing I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you the tone that I actually dialed in to this little um, amp, which sounds awesome. And you guys can get that Jake style tone as well. All right, let's head over to the computer and I'll show you in the Yamaha app. Um, how I dialed this in. Alrighty, I have the amp plugged into my Mac via the USB cable. Uh, this actually doubles up as 
an audio interface as well. And it's just off screen. You can just see the corner here. <laughs> so um, I actually recorded the entire track using that USB cable method. So the internal audio interface on the THR, that's what you're hearing on the track when I did it on Havana. Alrighty, over here on the Mac, you can see what my settings are. So this is the uh, THR remote app. Basically, I used the uh, the special channel. It basically has a couple of um, different options on there. Sounds a little bit different from the um, high gain and the lead channels. So I chose the um, the classic, which was the most Marshall esque style of sound, and then the gain is at sixty five, so not too saturated. You know, the rhythm tone I didn't want it to be extremely extremely saturated. The masters at ninety four, so pretty much all the way up. The bass is at sixty eight. The mids are at one hundred percent. And the treble is at seven. Now, um, when I dialed in the sound, I needed that very mid-heavy sound, but I didn't need that really, really kind of scratchy, high-end type of fizzy sound. So I basically dialed out the treble. And you can do that on amps. <laughs> I remember a very famous guitar player once telling me at a gig it was, um, I asked him how he got his sound because it sounded so round and he was using a Marshall. And he said, basically, I turned the treble down to like one or two. And then I just add in a little bit with an EQ pedal if I need it. So this is something that's done by a lot of people <laughs> because Marshalls can sound very, very trebly. All right, the cabinet that I chose for this was the Vintage 412, which is my um, favorite sounding cabinet, actually. And then I had the gate on as well, just to kind of, you know, tame any external noise and stuff. Now, this was the rhythm sound. Now, for the lead sound, all I did was I basically put the gain up to 100 and then I used a little trick. Now, all of you with uh, THRs who are looking for just that little bit more gain, this is gonna be a cool trick for you. So what I do is something that has been done um, with various pedals for, for time immemorial, basically. So I turned on the compressor because we have a compressor there. Now the sustain is only at 30, so it's not really kind of adding too much compression, but the level is boosted. Now, when I got the uh, THR, when I plugged it in and played it, I felt that I needed a little bit more push, a little bit more kind of gain in there, you know, for a lead tone, a really saturated lead tone. So obviously there isn't a drive pedal um, built into the, the THR, the remote or the amp itself. So I looked down there and I was like, there's a compressor on there. It has a level control on there. I can boost the level and it's basically gonna have a similar effect. And it did, it worked really beautifully well. So for the lead sound, I've got a saturated tone, and for the rhythm sound, I turned it off and had a less saturated sound. So, so a little bit less gain. So there you go, that's the trick that I used within the THR remote app. All right, over here in Logic, I have my session set up. And um, this guitar six here, rhythm guitar six, this is actually the beginning of the rhythm track, and um, I'll play it for you. Such a cool riff. I've, I've actually done a lesson on this riff, so I'll link it somewhere up here so you guys can go and check it out as well. Alrighty, so uh, the EQ trick that I used for this um, I have been using for many, many, many years. When I used to use the uh, Blue Guitar Amp 1, um, I used to use this as well. So basically, I have stacked another impulse response on top of here. <laughs> That's the only thing that I did. <laughs> and it basically shaped the tone. Now, I know what a lot of you might be thinking. Um, why would you stack an impulse response on top of uh, basically a cab simulation? Now, sometimes when you listen to uh, the sound of an amp when it's uh, plugged in direct, even if it has an emulation of a cab, it's still quite fizzy. And um, if you stack another impulse response on top, it actually rounds off the tone. And that's what I've found, and that's what I've been using very, very effectively for some years now. So um, if I turn off the impulse response first, you'll hear that the, uh, the tone is actually a little bit scratchy. And that was with the um, cab emulation dialed into the THR. Now what I've found is if the uh, cab emulation basically sounds like this, it essentially sounds like just an amp plugged in without any cab emulation. It's very, very similar. And that's why stacking an IR on top of it actually works to round off the tone. 
so you get more of an organic tone. So the uh, impulses I've used for this, um, again, I've basically used the impulses which I've uh, captured from my um, G1280 speaker. Like I said, you can go and check out that pack if you'd like to um, um, play around with these. So for this one, I actually used individual uh, impulse responses. I started off with the JP121 uh, mic, just the middle position there. And um, then I went to the uh, 57, the off axis first. Then I needed a little bit more bite. So I added the uh, 57 middle as well. And that basically gave me that tone. And essentially I did the same thing on the, uh, the rhythm guitars as well and the lead guitars. So on the rhythm guitars here, um, if I play them. Now these are different impulse responses which I have on here. On this one, on the left side I have deep cab number one. And um, on the second one I have deep cab number two. So there you go, I just stacked cab number one and cab number two together, the deep cab number one and deep cab number two, and it just worked. It sounds fantastic. Now on the original mix, I had actually used different impulse responses, but then I've gone back and basically added in these and matched the sound pretty much dead on. So um, these are the impulse responses, which will get you that sound, which I've got with the THR. Now, like I said, I did use a different setting. I'm gonna quickly show you that setting so that if you want to use this method of stacking impulse responses on top, of uh, the uh, THR sound, then it's gonna work in the same way. Alrighty, over here on the screen, you can see the THR remote again, and this patch is called Live Forever. It was the default name of the patch when I um, plugged it in for the first time. I never changed it, maybe I should. But anyways, this is the patch which I created. This is the one that I use every day when I'm teaching and stuff and just playing. Uh, love the sound of this. But there were some changes which I needed to make in order to get that Jake sound. So um, left it on special and classic, turned the gain down to 64 again, uh, left uh, the EQ as it is here, master at 94, bass at 37, mids at 92, and the uh, treble at 12. Now, this is only a little bit of a difference from the other patch, but it did make a big difference in terms of how it was recorded. Then um, turned off the compressor, which is my extra gain stage, and turned off the echo, turned off the reverb. Didn't need those recorded because I add them in as a send effect when I do the production in Logic. So I didn't want to record a wet signal, I needed a dry signal. So this was my rhythm tone. And then when I did my lead tone, put this up to 100, turned on the compressor, compressor sustain is at 30, level is at 82, gave me that very, very saturated sound. So then I needed to stack the impulse response on top of this sound in order to get that nice rounded, very mid heavy sound, which you hear on the recording that I did. So there you go, there are the sounds. So what I'm gonna do now is take the THR, which is here. Nicely lit up. <laughs> I'm gonna take it into the other room, turn it up and play some Red Dragon Cartel. Yeah, let's do it.
So there you go guys and girls, three amplifiers, three pedals, amazing turns, I love playing through all of that gear. It was a blast, especially in here where I could really, really turn it up and make some noise. <laughs> what an amazing guitar this is as well. This is my iconic guitars, Evolution S, uh, worked perfectly. It's a very kind of Charvel-esque kind of guitar. That's why I picked it. Anywho, which were your favorite tones? I would love to know, so leave a comment and let me know. If I had to pick one amp or one pedal, I think I would go for my Plexi. It's just such an insanely cool sounding amplifier. Sounds so, so damn good. And the uh, Sakalis Room 40 pedal, that is such a sensational pedal. It really does sound like my Plexi. And also the uh, number 3934, which I have built into my um, purple number 39 head. It's, it's really eerie kind of playing through that and getting those same frequencies and that same kind of vibe from a pedal. It fulfilled everything I, you know, I thought it would and I wanted it to. So um, I'm going to be bringing you a full video of that pedal at some point. Now I know a lot of you guys have the Friedman pedals as well, so I showed you the settings. Um, please play around with them and enjoy. So they were my Jake tones from the Friedman pedals as well. And you THR guys, that is such a cool amp, isn't it? <laughs> such a phenomenally fantastic amplifier. And obviously purple number 39 is a superstar. It incorporates those amplifiers which were so revered by rock stars like George Lynch and Warren Martini and Slash as well. Just such an incredible amplifier. All right guys, if you enjoyed that, please do consider hitting that subscribe button and the bell notification as well so you know when new videos are gonna be coming up. The next video, I am gonna be bringing you Jake and Randy Rhodes on Guitar Gladiators. So be sure to tune in for that because that's going to be sensational as well. All right, we're going to carry on Jakey Lee month next time. So I'll see you again really soon with another video. Have a fantastic day. See you later. Bye.